Hey everyone, Pastor George here for our third day of TULIP, number three, limited atonement, right? So you had total depravity, unconditional election, and now we have limited atonement. But before we talk about limited atonement, you're going to be introduced to a concept that I was introduced to in seminary called systematic theology. And what systematic theology is, is it's trying to make a theological system where maybe make it try it make it as scientific as possible where you can kind of look at the bible and then figure out ways of thinking about things theologically and that's what john calvin did you know, with his institutes on the christian religion which is a really important work and the founding as i kind of pointed out very important for our theology now i'm not going to get into all the heady nitty-gritty stuff in that but it's important to know because once you have a system all parts of the system have to work together right so if it's like an auto car factory all of the parts of the factory have to work together to get a car at the end. So with the idea of sovereignty going on and with these other two parts of the system, total depravity and unconditional election, we're going to get to limited atonement. And limited atonement is going to sound weird, uh, but it is biblical, number one. And number two, it plays in with the rest of the system, right? So it, it's an important part. So for limited atonement, limited atonement teaches that Jesus died. When Jesus died, he died only for those people who he would save, right? So it's a limited. The opposite is is unlimited atonement. So one of the things that this is this is a contentious issue because you have stuff like John three sixteen, right, where it says that Jesus, that God so loved the world that he sent his uh, only begotten Son, right? Um, and it, so the world, right? It sounds like it's a lot of people. It's everyone. Uh, and so Jesus' death on the cross was satisfactory for the sins of everyone in the world. I, I will say that limited atonement is probably the most contentious of all of the things in Tulip, even in the Reformed branch, although I think it makes sense once you look at other biblical verses. So Jesus died just for those he was, he was, he was, was predestined to save, right? The elect, the unconditionally elected people that we learned about yesterday, the church. Um, or the invisible church is sometimes how it's also called. Now, the reason that we believe this is because if God has predestined people to be saved, if there is this idea of sovereignty and God is seeing the whole picture, then God knows who is going to be saved and who's not going to be saved. And so when Jesus dies for people, then he dies only for those who are going to be saved, right? Otherwise, it's not really you know, effective for, for other people because it doesn't actually end up playing out in the story of the church or in the history of the church. And so I just want to give you some e examples of where people usually point. Uh, John 10, 14 through 15, Jesus lays his life down for his sheep, right? Um, Jesus will not lose any of his sheep in John 10, 28. Uh, it, in Jesus, uh, Jesus prays a high priestly prayer in John 17, where he says, you've given me these people for they are yours. Um, Ephesians 5, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, right? So it's not because he did not give himself up for the world, but he gave himself up for the people who would be part of his church. And Matthew 1, um, Joseph, you know, it said to Joseph that he will save his people from their sins, right? So that that's kind of where we normally look to see these types of things. There's other other verses as well. Again, I can always get more heady than this, but I just kind of want to lead in with with these, and you can do a lot more reading if you want. Obviously, there are other verses that that try and uh, that put people will point to that say the other type of thing. But I think if you're if you're going to accept this idea that God predestines people, then I think that naturally leads to the understanding that, of course, in a theological, philosophical way, then Jesus only died for the people who who he would save, um, because that's the effective way of, of doing things. You can disagree with this. That's just normally how I teach. Uh, normally how it's taught in Presbyterian theology and also you know what i believe but of course what i believe doesn't mean that's what you have to believe uh, but there you go so that's limited atonement for today so tomorrow we're going to do i which is actually one of my favorite ones which is irresistible grace so tomorrow we're doing irresistible grace i will see you all then be happy and be healthy and i will see you tomorrow